Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Tridian Expert Summit 2021. Uh, let me introduce myself uh, briefly. I'm Azad Utan. I'm RWS's Chief Technology Officer, and it's my pleasure to be talking to you for the next 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, as you've been able to see in the opening video, uh, 2020 has been a very busy year for product development. And for those of you wondering about some of the pretty large numbers in the video, some of these have been fueled by our latest cloud offerings getting updates nearly every two weeks, and our release counts growing significantly. Now, why am I telling you this? It's important because it demonstrates our commitment to agile technology. It's genuinely at the heart of everything we do, and it's a question I'm often posed. As the CTO at RWS, my responsibilities cover all of our products from content and language technologies, through to our AI and MT offerings, as well as the bulk of our internal technical capabilities that we use to power our language services. During this session, I'd like to take a look at what we've accomplished together, and more importantly, where Tridian's future is heading. Let me start with the overall RWS view. As you know, we use technology to improve the way we do business and how we deliver our services. And of course, this extends to the software products we offer. We've built a deep bench of expertise over the years in language and content management alongside artificial intelligence. And that expertise has generated a lot of innovation from blueprinting to perfect matches to neural machine translation. And we will continue to deliver further innovation through our products and services. And I'll touch on those a little bit later. But now that we are RWS, we're in the process of rebranding these offerings. And I'd like to walk you through these changes briefly. Our product portfolio comprises three main pillars which have all been updated to reflect our new home at RWS. Moving forward, RWS Language Cloud is the name of our foundational platform for all language technology. Representing more than just translation management, it includes our market-leading CAT tool Trados, terminology management, as well as our legacy enterprise translation management solutions. RWS Linguistic AI represents our neural machine translation offerings and related AI technologies for content transformation. It is incorporated into the other pillars or offered as additional standalone products. And Linguistic AI is a space that is developing rapidly and where you will see more innovations from us. And lastly, RWS Content Technologies represents our portfolio of web content management, database structured content, and S1000D based structured content management offerings, as well as XPP, our XML professional publisher solution. Aligned with the needs of our customers, we provide a spectrum of deployment options for our technology, and it ranges from fully cloud-based to on-premise and various hybrid models in between. This ensures we can align to our customers' preferred way of managing technology and deploy in a manner that best suits them. Now, let's take a closer look at the individual products in each pillar. All of the products that you know and love are, of course, still here, only with a little less SDL in the name. And as part of this rebrand, I'm happy to announce the return of the Language Weaver name. Its reputation demonstrates our strong pedigree and innovation in the MT space, replacing the SDL machine translation name. Some of you may not know, but the name pays homage to Warren Weaver, a pioneer of machine translation. And the name also better reflects our plans beyond purely machine translation, especially as the area of content and language transformation is gaining momentum. It links natural language processing, natural language generation, neural machine translation, and other transformative technology areas together into one. If you wonder how these three technology categories hang together, let me walk you through a high-level overview. Let's start with the RWS Language Cloud Pillar which includes a language capability such as translation management, machine translation, CAT, and terminology management. And within our WS content technologies, we provide content management, editorial capabilities, and content lifecycle management. Layered on top of, of those are, uh, are our RWS linguistic AI, including both linguistic and semantic capabilities, such as smart routing, taxonomy management, and many other rapidly evolving technologies. And all of this is supported by enterprise core capabilities for integration, search, security, reporting, and other important elements of a well-integrated technology stack. Now, on top of these three, 
we help create and build a wide range of solutions to solve specific use cases, ranging from website management to internal comms to support and all the way through to industry specific solutions such as data discovery or connected healthcare. As you can see, our platform is built for organizations that consider their ability to manage content and translations on a global scale as critical to their business. And they also want to leverage innovations in automation and machine learning to streamline their processes. Now, even though there's a lot to, to tell about our language cloud, TradOS and Language Weaver offerings, today I want to focus on RWS content technologies and specifically on Trillium. If you're interested to hear more about the other parts of our portfolio, please watch the on-demand version of my keynote at our Connect event, which you can, you, you can find on rws.com. Now, today, Tridian brings together over two decades of web and structured content management, combining Tridian sites and Tridian docs into what we call our intelligent content platform. As you can see through time, both types of content have landed in a similar place, one where content needs to be available in a way that is componentized and granular, so it can be served up dynamically through headless publishing capabilities. And the content consumer doesn't really care whether he looks at structured or unstructured information. And this is what Tridian uniquely delivers. So why do we talk about intelligent content? Well, given the need to manage content volume, quality and fragmentation, we need the help of semantic technologies that give meaning to content. And that way, technology can automate a lot of the mundane work involved in managing ever-growing volumes of granular content. And at the point of delivery to customers, the content needs to become more fluid so that it can flow anywhere based on headless delivery and rich metadata and be delivered in a personalized fashion. Now, with that in mind, let me talk a little more about the Tridian roadmap. Across the Tridian portfolio, which consists of Tridian site and Tridian docs, Development effort is focused on three main themes. And let's start with semantic AI. As you know, one of the big problems with content is that there's simply too much of it, both for editors as producers and also for us as consumers. The problem we need to deal with is about identifying what already exists so that we don't re recreate it. And at the same time, being able to find it in a clever way, even if we don't know exactly which words or terms to use. Ultimately, we're trying to serve the more relevant content-based information based on their intent. Now, through an OEM partnership with Semantic Web Company, Tridian will be the first content management platform on the market to natively embed semantic technologies to solve these challenges. Tridian will provide support for external ontologies and taxonomies, allowing end users to quickly and consistently tag information with the right concepts. This is enabled by a new automated smart tagging feature that uses natural language processing and confidence scoring. Of course, there is also support for multilingual taxonomies. And with human validation, this allows the editor to stay in control. Now, the great benefit of these new capabilities is that end users can reach their goals more quickly through smarter search that takes into account related concepts. An example is shown on screen where somebody searching for calf is provided with content that uses other words to describe the same topic. These new semantic capabilities will be available for both Tridian docs and Tridian sites, turning Tridian into a truly intelligent content platform. And again, to learn more about semantic AI, please attend Andreas Blumau's session from Semantic Web Company to learn more on knowledge graphs and the underlying technology behind this. The second theme that I want to talk about is that of a new UX. After the successful first release of the new experience space UI in Tridian Sites 9.5, we're now adding more advanced editorial use cases to it. We've applied user research to obtain feedback and insights from our customers to validate our assumptions and build the right product. Designs, user interactions, and UI controls are shared between Tridian Sites and Tridian Docs to ensure a consistent look and feel to the Tr Tridian portfolio. And for Tridian docs, we continue to improve collective spaces, especially regarding the reviewing of documents. And we're also working on a modern and simple UX called Organize Space that will replace the current web client. I'm sure you will like it as much as we do. And the third theme that I want to talk about is that of core technology. 
An ongoing theme for Tridian is continued updates to our core technology, removing roadblocks to modernization. Key themes that we're working on are cloud, entitlements, easy deployment, easy upgrades, security, and modernized authentication, including multi-factor authentication. We're also working on a new set of RESTful open APIs that provide a JSON data representation that are versioned and self-descriptive. And again, if you want to know more about the core technology changes, make sure you attend the architectural runway sessions for Tridian Science and Docs presented by Likhan Siddiqui and Dave DeMeyer, followed by an Ask Me Anything session, and please do ask them. So as you can see, it's been a busy year, and I hope that you agree that we're working on some amazing innovations. As I see it, this is a key part of the future of technology at RWS. Each product in each pillar will continue to be improved and provided with seamless inter interoperability, while we also focus on tight integration between our product pillars. In addition to delivering cutting edge products, we also provide innovative services such as our content supply chain advisory to help our customers get the most out of our products while opening up service opportunities for our partners as well. And when, when we combine those services and products, we can jointly create amazing business solutions to solve our customers' content and language challenges at any scale. Now, before I wrap up my presentation, there's one more thing to share with you. This year marks a very special occasion. It's 25 years ago that the first version of Tridian went live under the name IPS. Now, I don't think anybody could have foreseen how the internet would change our world so dramatically, but acknowledging that Tridian has been able to ride that wave throughout all those years and still solve the content management challenges of some of the world's largest brands proves how the vision and technology that underpins the platform are still as solid today as they were 25 years ago. And to celebrate this special year, I'm thrilled to let you know that we have a special guest speaker today at TXS, Arian Van Royen, the founder of Tridian. And I hope I didn't mispronounce his name too badly. Um, he's been kind enough to clear his diary to be with us today and celebrate this anniversary with us. So for me personally, and I trust you enjoy the rest of this TXS session and learn a few, a few things, I hope that the next time I'll be able to meet you um, is in person and I'll actually be able to see you personally and back at the other way. And so with that, Arian, over to you. Thank you, Azad. Thank you for welcoming me and uh, welcome all uh, back. I'm, I'm really happy to see you two all again. Uh, allow me to take you uh, a bit back in time. About uh, 25 years ago, I was invited to the, to the table of um, of a, a, a multimedia team of, uh, of the uh, Dutch publishing group, including the, the Volkskrant. And they wanted to go live uh, with their website on, uh, on the internet. And of course, them being publishers, we have been really uh, focusing on building an editorial environment, uh, a content management system that allows them to actually not just bring one website live, but actually a number of uh, publishing, publishing uh, sites uh, including uh, multiple newspapers and all kind of theme sites um, so we started to build the first version of Trillion at the time called uh, ips internet publishing system uh, and it's really interesting to see that the concepts that we defined from the beginning are real, still standing uh, we started out with a component-based uh, concept where we actually were separating content and design applying a publishing method to actually go uh, to prepare content uh, from the editorial stage into, into the delivery environment, separating content and, uh, and design, and applying uh, design uh, to it on, uh, on the component level. So really great to see uh, that the early fundamentals of, of this uh, are, still, are still alive and, and seen. At the time, it was called uh, pages and documents, uh, which are actually nowadays the, uh, the components uh, that we have. And so really uh, proud. If I, Look back at the uh, the site uh, in '96. It's still uh, yeah, it's still a bit dated. Um, yeah, the Wayback Machine didn't support all of the uh, imagery, as you can see here. Uh, but really uh, uh, great to see that this uh, this is you know, still uh, still there as a fundament. So maybe a question to you over time, eh, because I think many of the concepts has remained to be uh, be there. Uh, but the question to you, 
what kind of technologies have we been using to uh, to go live with this uh, technology? So type it in the chat. Um, I think we've seen many different technologies. Uh, so for example, uh, as some of you might know, uh, the actually the engine behind uh, Trillion was originally built in Perl. Uh, but the quote from Quarijn Slinks, uh, who was the webmaster at the time, actually, um, and the webmaster of the Volkskrant actually was the, the complexity was in uh, in bringing the the live linking uh, and so the component linking that was done inside the web server. So at the time we were building an NS API uh, in integration uh, based on C language indeed uh, into the application um, and that was of course running in the memory of the of the web server and uh, Netscape server at the time. Uh, so really interesting to see how uh, things have evolved uh, over time uh, and of course in only three years later, we started the actual company Trillion um, in '99 uh, to purely focus on this, uh, on, on bringing this product further to the market. And so it evolved uh, heavily uh, over time. Uh, we went, uh, we went from uh, from R4 in 2000 uh, to R5, uh, which really made uh, a big step uh, forward. And uh, I think at the time that that was actually. Yeah, a, lo a lot of the the new innovation, uh, and that was also recognized. And so at some moment in time, we were actually, yeah, surprised by a quote from uh, from one of uh, one of the key analysts uh, in the market. And for a European vendor to lead uh, the software pack is is quite interesting. And if you look at this uh, this slide, then of course we are proud. Um, but I think we are most proud that actually Trillion has been there all the time, and I think all of the other. Technologies uh, actually have faded away and are no longer in the uh, in the landscape. So really good to see how this uh, how this evolved. Um, so maybe another question uh, to you: um, What I mean, one of the profound concepts that we have uh, within Trillion uh, is, of course, uh, the blueprint uh, model. Yeah, so blueprinting. And so where does the where does the blue in blueprinting uh, come from? Um, and I think many people have, have been confusing that also with uh, the first customer. Now, the first customer was actually, uh, the first launching uh, uh, customer of 3 was actually Ericsson, uh, where we launched the product uh, uh, widely. Uh, but indeed, uh, blueprinting uh, was first implemented with the customer uh, KLM. Um, and so the blue is actually a hint towards uh, the blue of, uh, of KLM. That's uh, so really great to uh, to see uh, that it's still uh, alive. Of course, next to the to the name of uh, of Trillion. Uh, so blueprinting has been one of the one of the other key models uh, next to separating content and design and making sure that we have this stage process of content management towards delivery. And of course, um, that separation is still there. And of course, moving more and more to the to the front end. Uh, but also to uh, to think and, and make sure that content can be used in different uh, channels. And so um, that is still, uh, I think, a very important uh, fundament. And even uh, with the headless uh, approach nowadays, uh, a necessity uh, to get there. Of course, the, I'm talking a lot about 3D insights here. Um, but actually, uh, I think even before SDL at the time made it uh, the assumption to combine this, and uh, I'm really happy to see uh, how Azad presents the, the roadmap and the, and the strong combination of these products together. Uh, but it actually was already earlier seen uh, in the market. We actually were part of a component content management uh, report from Anne Rockley in 2009 that was both covering uh, the 3D and docs and the 3D and sites technology in one report. And so actually, Trisoft and Xisoft and Trillion were all in that compared next to each other yeah, because of our structured approach towards uh, content management. And so really uh, nice to see this, uh, this all come together. Um, yeah, so overall, super happy and proud that the community is so uh, alive um, and, and that AWS is taking Trillion so strongly forward. Uh, super happy uh, that the community is there. Uh, so. With that, I want to hand over back to, to Alex um, and, and looking forward to see the continuation of that uh, strong community and see what uh, the next presenter will bring there. Great. Thanks, Arjen. That's that's really cool. As somebody who's only been at RWS or SDL for two years, it's it's 
it's great to see the history of the product and uh, and the success it's had over time. So very cool. Thanks for thanks for doing that for us.